Hey everyone, Eugene here, back again with another video, this time on Hermes's uh, newest release from the Hermesence exclusive collection, Agar Eben. So there's been three brand new releases from this line, all done by new uh, in-house perfumer, Christine Nagel, who's taken over from, we're not sure if he's retired or just retired from Hermes, but Jean-Claude Elena, who from what I understand is staying on as an advisor to the brand, which I'm actually thrilled to hear because I am a huge fan of his work. Um, I love almost everything that he's done, so I'm glad to see that he's going to stay with the brand. Maybe he'll have some influence, hoping, but it's not like Christine Nigel, you know, needs that um, guidance because from what I can see from these three new releases, she's done, you know, a terrific job, kind of knocked these out of the park uh, as far as I'm concerned. So here is. Agar Ben, I think that's how you pronounce it. One thing I noticed with this, these three new releases is a small, very small change in packaging. If you have purchased um, a Hermescence before, this box probably doesn't look very familiar to you and I'll show you why. If you look carefully here, it says right about here, please make sure the customer never gets this white packaging. I'm not sure if you can focus. I've only got it because I've asked the sales assistant, you know, if I can have it. You know, I ordered, uh, I purchased several of these and it wasn't until, you know, kind of the last ones that I've purchased, I see them come out with this white box and I was like, hmm, what is that? I've never seen it before. And uh, they, they kind of take the fragrance, the packaging out of the box. It comes in uh, just some clear plastic like this and they chuck this out. So this is from Brenda Ruglis and um, they, they won't even give you this clear packaging. Nowhere ever does the box come sealed. It just comes in, uh, a nice orange coffer and they, they'll put a bow tie around it or some kind of bow and then you'll get this um, nice drawstring bag in there. So it never comes sealed up until now. So I, I guess going forward, all boxes will come cellophane sealed with the name of the perfume right there, only if we can get this thing to focus. So, Agari Ben, 100 mil. I know they used to come in 200 mil. I'm not sure if they're still doing that or not, but you know, 200 mil is totally unnecessary for me. I'd actually love if these things came smaller, but I always, my, my, my preference is always 100 mil. Okay, so I'm not sure how I'm going to attack this because I've never really had to open a uh, Permacense cellophane before, but I, I do I do actually love opening cellophane. Christo and I had this conversation before. He thought it was really cool that it didn't come wrapped in cellophane. It was like one of the only exclusive lines that doesn't have that, but um, I don't know. I just love the sound of cellophane and and opening the uh, package. Kind of feel like a kid again. It's not too often that we can spoil ourselves and perfume is usually one of the ways that I do. Okay, so again, on this box, nowhere does it say Agar Ben or the name of the fragrance. So usually, most times they come wrapped like this. Nice white paper. There's your drawstring baggie. Okay, boxes like that. Feels like there's some information in here in this baggie. Yeah, just a little pamphlet. And here is Agar Eben. Um, looks like, okay, so there you can see Agari Ben, kind of the brownie, purplish tinge cap to it with the white stitching. Love the leather cap. It's a leather finish. 
Um, really like these bottles. Atomizer is really good. Um, so Agari Ben, listed note of Oud. Uh, I'm really thrilled that Oud is not in the name of this, even though they're kind of one and the same. But um, I mean, for us uh, enthusiasts, we kind of already know that. But just for the the guy going around looking for something um, with Oud in the name, they might not be able to recognize Agar. So I, I'm really glad that Hermes did not put the name Oud in here. You know, it's only Hermes and really Chanel that haven't released an Oud based fragrance yet. Um, Oud is in the notes. I can't say that I pick up Oud per se in this fragrance, although there is a ton of wood, um, ton of wood vibes. Uh, you know, very dusty, dry, um, like chopping wood or cutting wood, burning wood. I do get a lot of those vibes. If I was given this fragrance and, and, and told to just, you know, write down or jot down a bunch of things off the top of my head, I don't know if I would write down Oud, but, uh, you know, now that it says Oud, and I, I'm not going to say I still pick up Oud, but... There is something smoky and 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 dry and woody in here, but uh, still not enough really for me to say yes, that's oud, or at least um, what I know or interpret oud as. Uh, I really doubt that Hermes has used real oud oil in here, as uh, not many Western perfume brands have done that. Um, also glad that they didn't jack the price for this because of the Oud note. A lot of brands do um, raise the price as they recognize Oud to be a more expensive resource. So uh, I'm glad that they didn't do that. But for the most part, what do I get from Agar Iben? Uh, you know, it's it's warm, it's spicy, it's dry, it's, it's contrasting with creamy. So dry and creamy, you get that. Um, it's smoky, it's a little bit herbal in the dry down. Uh, it kind of feels like to me, you know, I almost get a sense of, you know, crackling, um, burning wood. So let's say a, a lumberjack had chopped down the tree. You almost get a little bit of that, a, a tinge of greenness in, in the middle of the wood. So he slices a, a, a big log of wood down or a tree down. So you, you take a sniff of that, the inside of that wood. And uh, it's got a little bit of fresh greenness coming from there. So, you know, this lumberjack would go and throw the wood on top of a bonfire. Um, that's when it starts to get smoky. Uh, it almost seems like it's crackling to me. It's got kind of this, this solar feeling, um, almost like a sunny feeling. And, um, and it gets quite smoky in the dry down. So uh, I, I really do like this. I think it will be with time once it's discovered, uh, once it's released everywhere, and people do get to know this, I think it will be one of the more popular releases. Um, maybe not as a big of a hit as Ombre Nargale and uh, Vetiver Tonka, but probably just below, you know, in that Queer d'Ange, uh, Poivre de Samarcande areas. I, I really do feel that. I think it's a good fragrance, a good release, um, excellent release for Christina Gel to prove herself, which I think she has with these um, with these three. I've also got here. This is um, the other two, Mer Eglantine. Save this for another day. Right here, we've got the other one, Cidre Sambach. So, Mer Eglantine is all about rose. Kind of surprised to see it was more about rose, fresh rose than myrrh. Cedar Sombach is an animalic white floral with a whole lot of wood in the base. Kind of a spicy white floral. It's got a lot of bite to it. Um, and surprisingly enough, she used in this uh, the spice of cumin, which is kind of Jean-Claude Elena's signature, cumin and cardamom. So you do get a lot of that cumin in Cedar Sombach. Agari Ben. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Go and check it out. Oud based perfume, which isn't all that oody. It's all about wood, uh, smoked wood, dry wood, herbal wood, um, a little tinge of green. Great. Uh, 
How do I feel about this? I like this a lot. I think, not that it smells like, but fans of Sycamore and Tam Dao from Diptyque will really enjoy this. That's just my two cents. Um, if you smelled it, let us know what you think. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments and I'll get back to you. Other than that, I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you again.